Hey Earthlings, welcome back to Cloud Shadow TV. I'm Jesse, and this is Alan, and today we're going to be talking about every sci-fi book I read in 2022. So last year I read 12 books, which I know isn't that much for some people, but that was the most books I've ever read in a year, so I met my personal goal, which uh, was equals one book a month, although I didn't exactly do it like that. But today I'm going to be talking about the six sci-fi books I read. Well, really it's five and a half because I'm going to be talking about the book Earthlings, which is, it has some sci-fi elements, but overall I would say it has more of an absurdism genre. Although it's maybe my favorite book I read of the year, so I had to include it in this list. And it does talk about aliens, so. So the first book I'm going to be talking about is The Long Way to a Small Angry Planet by Becky Chambers. I really, 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 really loved this book. I thought every character was so vibrant. You really got to know them. There are some weird noises happening outside my apartment. Excuse that. Um, but like I was saying, uh, the characters were really great. It's a really, really fun, cool world um, taking place in the distant future where humans have kind of spread out into different factions throughout the universe. The main character comes from somebody who was raised in a wealthy family on Mars, which is, it's really interesting. There's a lot of uh, interesting social issues and almost political issues talked about through these really fun, quirky characters. I would compare this book to like watching a TV show, the most out of any of the books that I read. From a writing and storytelling perspective, I thought it was very inspirational. For example, there are ca characters who are genderless or they switch between genders because of like their alien species and all the alien species in this book are so, so fun. I really love it. For me, as a writer, I do screenwriting. This was really inspirational for uh, the type of sci-fi world I would wanna create for one of my projects. So I give this book a high praise. I really like it. And um, I've only read one other book in the series, which I'll talk about next, but I'm definitely planning on reading the other ones. I just kind of wanted to go a different route and explore some different books, so I switched it up. But the first book, it follows the, the Wayfarer crew, and they call this the Wayfarer series, but the other books follow characters that aren't as prominent in this book. So it's the same world, it's the same universe, but it's focused on different characters. And I actually really liked that. I thought it was a way to see this universe and it made it a really big world that you can really visualize and get into the nooks and crannies of. So I really love that. So next I'll talk about the other book I read in that series, which is A Closed and Common Orbit. This book is, and like, as you can see, so I lent my copy of this to someone and they never gave it back to me, but I just like had to own it. So I bought it again and this one's like so clean. And then this is the one that I actually read <laughs> the copy of. And this is the second book in the Wayfarer series. I also really enjoyed this book. I think if you're a fan of the movie Her, you should definitely read this book. It talks a lot about AI, or our relationship with technology, and what it will mean once we create artificial intelligence. So it goes over some really deep things in a very vibrant, lighthearted, same style as the first book. You really fall in love with these characters. It has like a heartwarming feeling to it. It's uh, Becky Chambers, I feel like she's a positive writer, like she writes books that are gonna like have deep emotional pieces to them but overall are they make you happy and that's something I really appreciate about her writing. Next up this is a book that I really tore up got into I guess uh, The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. So I love the movie The Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy and as a screenwriter I was interested in the adaptation like how did they go from this to the movie. Now this was kind of a weird choice to pick for that because there's a whole radio show it's based off of and there's multiple books in the series and I only read the one. It's very different from the movie but it was fun and funny. Again really great alien universe. <sighs> I know a lot of people will disagree and most of the time the books are better but me personally I liked the movie better than the book 
but I still, I really enjoyed reading the book. I think if you're a fan of the movie, it's worth checking out. I think it would be a good gift to give like your dad or something. I gave it to my dad one year before I actually read it because he loves the movie. But overall, I, I think it's a good read. It's a classic kind of book and it's funny. So it's always good when a book can make you laugh. Back to Becky Chambers. I read her Monk and Robot series. These are the two books that are out currently. Um, obviously, I liked the first one, so I wanted to check out more of her writing. Um, first, let's talk about A Psalm for the Wild Built. This book was, I read it at the perfect time for me. This book, it really mirrored some things that were going on in my life and the way that it talks about like death and healing it really it was comforting to read at the time and healing um so i really really enjoyed reading this book it honestly reading it feels like a warm hug it's a hundred it's a short book it's it's a hundred and like 47 pages or something like that yeah, 147 pages. It says right here on the cover, an optimistic vision of a lush, beautiful world. Martha Wells is who that quote is from. And I would say that's a really good summary. It's a vision of a future. Humans are living on the moon, or you're not totally sure if they are humans, but they're human-like. Instead of a terrible, horrible dystopia where humans have ruined everything, we've actually figured it out and it gives hope and it's positive and it just makes you feel happy while you're reading it. I think in a lot of ways it's kind of like reading a philosophy book. You're kind of just learning how the monk views the world and then how the robot views the world and you see how they differ and how they're similar and how it brings these two together and it's just a really beautiful heartwarming story. It made me cry at parts. Like I said it was uh, the timing I read it was perfect for me. It was healing. It was comforting. I really, really loved this book. There was something in it that, like, I momentarily thought about getting tattooed. I really just, I think I really just love Becky Chambers as a writer. She's so positive, and I, I enjoy her visions of the future and her imaginary alien worlds. They're pretty cool. So if uh, the future can be anything like that, that would be awesome. But that brings us to the second book in the series, which is A Prayer for the Crown Chai. And I gotta be honest, I didn't like this one as much. It's still good, and I enjoyed it while I read it, but it's kind of difficult for me to talk about because I don't really remember that much what happened. So I do feel bad about that. I did read it, but I guess it kind of blended in with the first one. I'm not sure where one starts and the other one ends. They're both pretty short, and for whatever reason, this one just didn't stick in my memory the same way as A Psalm for the Wild Built. And that brings us to our final sci-fi book that I read last year, uh, which like sci-fi for this one. And this book is called Earthlings by Sayaka Murata. I hope I'm saying that right. I've also read Convenience Store Woman, but I read that last year. It's also not sci-fi, so I'm not including it in this video. This book, like so many trigger warnings. Do not read this book without looking up the trigger warnings. It is heavy. It is brutal. It is disturbing. I w wanted to throw my book on the ground when I was reading the last few pages, but oh my gosh. I It has the same central theme as Convenience Store Woman, which is basically like living outside of societal norms and a judgment on society and how it affects humanity. But gosh, it's just so perfectly unsettling. We start with the main character's young life and see her grow up into an adult and how events from her early life affect her as an adult. And boy, oh boy, if you can think of it, it goes there, I'm telling you. But somehow, you just have to keep reading more. It's like so disturbing, and like you hate her whole family, and you totally can see how she went down this path. At the same time, it's just like so creative and has such a powerful message on how like the characters view the world. It's not like sci-fi exactly, but the main character believes she's an alien 
and she starts to live her life as if she is non-human. So she tries to do anything possible she can think of to separate herself from humanity. So it's wild. It's wild, you guys. This is like the book of non-conforming to the max. Not something to model your life after at all, but like a very powerful and very, very interesting read. So I highly recommend Earthlings. I had to finish it with the best one. So these are the sci-fi books that I read in 2022. I appreciate you guys watching. Make sure to come back for the next installment of the Alien Abduction Support Group. And I'll see you next time. Make sure you like and subscribe. Peace out, Earthlings.